Hi, so this is the second part of the photo experience doing the rock concert and I just wanted to run, um, talk about a couple of the things that I experienced, a couple of things that I think really helped. Um, first of all, at the beginning, um, during the setup process, um, it wasn't just the band setting up on the stage with their sound and lighting checks and everything else. There was also a lot of uh, wasted time in between before the party started. That gave me a great opportunity. Um, gave me an opportunity to actually chat with the band, um, you know, have a drink with them, chat, get to know them, see what their facial mannerisms were, how they moved. Where that really helped is when you, when you start to understand how a person moves, then you're more likely to be able to predict them when they're on the stage and you're on, under pressure. Um, especially when they're moving around and they're dancing and they're moving the guitars and you see their facial expression. How much do they smile? Um, you know, at what point is their smile finished and at what point is, uh, are they actually making a smile? So that to me really helped um, to get to know the person that you're dealing with and, and taking photographs of. You then catch them at their best moments. And of course that is important. One example of that is the uh, picture which I took with the drummer um, and then the guitarist, the main guitarist, coming towards and then the eye contact between the drummer and him that was typical of what I experienced of him when we were chatting between the setup and between the start. The other thing that I think is very important um, I don't know whether you noticed but I'm actually using older lenses and the, the one that I actually kept going back to quite a lot was this uh, very old 135 millimeter lens because it allowed me to stand off a bit and capture those moments. It seems perhaps counterintuitive because you don't have the autofocus, you don't have the automatic metering in. But if you go into uh, manual, um, uh, manual exposure, then you actually have one major advantage with that because you've actually got the aperture ring to be able to control. So if you set for the lowest light conditions to the narrowest depth of field, largest aperture you can get, then when it gets very bright, you can always shoot it down and knock it down yourself which is a hell of a lot easier, I find, than playing with the little dials that you get on the camera. The second aspect that I find those older lenses is better is with manual focus. Now, you know where the microphone stand is, you know where the person is going to be, and therefore you're able to point to the bottom of the microphone stand, preset the focus, waiting for them to come actually to that point to start the next chorus or the next piece of singing. That is something much more difficult, I find, on the automated lenses. The focus ring just goes round and round and round, and you have no, no position which gets to the end, and you know it's just a little bit back. So the manual lenses actually really give you some sort of uh, tactile feedback to be able to preempt and predict what's going on. And I think a lot of people get this feeling that you've got to have a 70 to 200 autofocus um, just to be able to get it because you can't focus quickly enough but you can actually preempt the focus because you know where they're going to be. Anyway, so I hope that gives some insight into what I did, how I thought it was helpful, what I think actually helps to make it better, and why I think the older lenses can actually make things better. Thanks.